Awesome. Okay, cool. So first, thank you for coming. I know it's the after lunch slot, so we'll try to keep it fun and exciting. This is my uh, first time speaking at WordCamp Toronto. It's actually my first time speaking at a WordCamp, but um, so I'm really excited to be here, and I'm also really excited about this topic, which the slide is called the Noob's Journey to Core, and that is essentially me. I'm the noob, and this is my experiences on getting into Core, con uh, being able to contribute to Core. <coughs> so. Because it's, at, it's after lunch, anyone who asks questions, well, the first seven people that ask questions get giant things of chocolate. So, and they're all almond based, unfortunately. I didn't realize that when I grabbed them all. So, if you ask a question, you get chocolate. One bar per person, please. Um, and yeah, so, anyways, let's get right into it. Does every question count? Um, <laughs> good one. Um, you know what? No. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so. This is just a quick thing about me. Uh, I'm, I've been a web developer for 10 years. I started using WordPress in 2009. Uh, I'm currently a senior web engineer at 10up, and we are hiring. So if you want to come join an awesome company and do really, really wicked things with WordPress, come talk to me. We can, I can't hire you, but I can definitely tell you what it's like to work there. And I consider myself a noob core contributor. Currently, I have 11 props to my name. Does everyone know what props means? Let me just ask that question. No, OK. So I write a patch. I, I write some code. I contribute to core. I get props. And you get that on every time you do something with core. It'll, it, it'll make a bit more sense as we get further into it. So I have 11 right now, <coughs> which is not a lot, but it's still something. And that's, a, that's why I, I'm a noob. So <coughs> after this, in this room, I think, um, we are having a contributor day. It's more like a contributor afternoon, but please, if you've never contributed to Core before, actually, let's do another survey. Who has contributed? Nice, nice. And I'm assuming everyone else has not, unless there's some weird edge case I'm not catching there. So um, we are going to try to get as many people as we can props in this room in like an hour and a bit. So um, please come. And we can get you set up if you've never gotten set up. We can help you through it. It's a lot of fun. It is totally worth the effort. So that said, <laughs> this is probably not the first slide that you thought you would see in a welcome to the core contributing talk, right? This is the perception that I had when I started trying to contribute in 2010. And I think it's a perception a lot of people have that contributing to core is really hard. I don't want to do it, man. It's so hard to do. And the thing is, it's, it's not hard. It's not contributing that's hard. There's lots of things to get, that you have to get ramped up on when you start to try to contribute. And so I think this is a more accurate statement, that ramping up to being able to contribute effectively and where you get some sort of like feeling of reward out of it, that part is sort of the hard part. Um, <coughs> so I've come up with this thing that I'm affectionately referring to the WTF trifecta. The three items that I ran into that you have to be able to sort of tackle to kind of get past the point of like, what am I doing, right? So the first item is the technical aspect of things. So <laughs> there's a lot of documentation online. You have to work with SVN. If you're not comfortable with SVN, there's a learning curve there. Um, if you're like me, when, when I first started, I, never, I had never used any version control at that time, um, mostly because I didn't think I needed it, which was a silly thought, but that was a long time ago. Also, there's... Um, I had very little command line experience. And so there's a lot of documentation out there and there's a lot of tutorials out there that tell you how to get set up technically, but it's all kind of pointed towards the, the command line thing. So if, if I say command line and you, do, you don't know what I'm talking about, um, it, it's going to be a little bit scary for you because it's like I'm hacking the matrix. I'm in here writing commands and my computer's doing crazy things, right? So <coughs> I feel like I'm talking really fast. Is, am I good? Um, so with command line potentially comes this whole dependency package hell thing. So if you need to install something with command line, you then, you, oh, I have to install something first before I can install that. And then I have to install something else before I can install that thing so I can install the next thing. And you kind of just get into this confusing state where you're not really sure if you've broken your computer or what's going on, right? So there's a lot of confusion in there, especially when you're getting ramped up. The next item is track. Track is the bug task management system that WordPress core use, uses to basically manage its tickets. Um, it, for me, I finally got set up and then I went to track. I clicked on one of the reports, which we'll talk about in a second, but, and it's called the active tickets report. Uh, I don't, ever, don't ever click on that when you first get started because it's like every ticket in WordPress, or sorry, in, in core. So I found one that I liked. I thought it looked really cool. I clicked on it, and it was like, like 800 comments. It was four years old. There was 10 patches. 
everybody who was commenting seemed way smarter than I was, knew WordPress way better than I did. So I immediately just closed that window <laughs> and, and went and cried for 10 minutes. So I, I went throughout of like, OK, well, you know what? I'm going to create my own tickets. I'm going to start doing patches for like coding standards and stuff like that. And you know, little features that I'm comfortable coding and I think should be in core. Um, and so I was kind of more comfortable in that route. And that's perfectly valid, too. Um, which leads me to the next point, which is it, I'm calling it the community, but it's kind of like it's kind of a catch-all for a lot of things. Sort of, how do you move your your tickets forward? Or how do you get your patches in the core? Who do you talk to? Who's making these decisions? You know, why am I speaking only in questions right now? Like lots of things like that, right? So you take those three items, and then you add the fact that it can seem a little bit magical. The whole process of WordPress core is a bit magical. Who's making these decisions, right? Like. Why was my ticket closed as a won't fix? One, what does what won't fix mean? And two, why won't you fix it, right? So there's, there's sort of a lot of questions. And then on top of that, you add real life. <laughs> so everybody's busy. Uh, contributing to core is a free time endeavor. You do it when you can. So if you're, like, I'm, like I'm married, I've got two kids, I've got another one on the way, I've got a dog, I've got more activities than I can afford. <laughs> and, uh, um, I don't have a lot of time to sit down and waste two hours trying to figure out why my version of SVN on my computer doesn't match Core's version. That's not, that's, that's not really where you want to spend your, your time, right? So that can be frustrating. So you take all of those things, you put them together, and your experience to Core can be a bit like this. You can just, it's, it's not fun, right? So <coughs> we don't want that. Nobody wants that. That's not fun. That's not getting something out of your effort, right? So what we want is we want, we, we, we want Chuck. We, we, we want this, right? So finally, in 2015, so if you're following along, I started in 2010, and in the 2015, I got my first props. And then I've been a, I've been a contributor for 4.2, 4.3, 4.3, 4.1, and the upcoming 4.4. So what happened? Well, I joined a really awesome company you might have heard of called 10up, and I got some help from some of my friends and coworkers there. And so, Having now gone through this whole process, I feel like I'm at the point where I can contribute effectively where it's not about the process, it's about writing better code or it's about improving WordPress, right? So the goal of my talk today, if anything, is to make it seem less magical and to hopefully give you some practical information that can help you in your journey to core and make it a lot less bumpy. So um, any questions about the ton of stuff I just, no? Okay. No one wants chocolate? All right, fine. So the <laughs> so. I'm just going to take a quick drink, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, if no one asks a question, you'll get a chocolate bar, OK? I promise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, that's the other thing. You can't ask questions before I explain the slide, sorry. My dog's name is no chocolate for you. <laughs> um, motivation. So because getting ramped up can be difficult and can be frustrating, I think it's important for everyone to kind of determine what their motivation is. Why are you wanting to do this? Now, this can be literally anything, but if you identify that, then at that you know, 2 a.m. moment when you're like, I just want to take the stupid laptop and pitch it into the lake, you know, it, it'll get you through those moments. So like, it could just be as simple as you just want to get your name on the props list. So whenever there's a new version of WordPress, you click the credits button, and there's a list of everyone that's contributed to that version. So that's perfectly valid. It's a great thing. It's a great resume builder. A lot of people want to do that, right? Who wouldn't want to hire a WordPress developer that has contributed to core? So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, an, an, another one is maybe you just want to get your idea in. A lot of people uh, are, are, are very involved because they want to get a particular concept or a particular feature into WordPress, and then maybe after that they don't aren't that interested in contributing and just <laughs> and just like to use it. Uh, uh, job security. If you contribute, it gets better. More people use it. We hire. They, they hire you to do more work, right? Um, for me personally, I think it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the community. It's phenomenal. And I, 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 for me, it's about giving back. Because this, this is crazy to me that WordPress is going to put my kids through college. An open source piece of software is going to pay my kids tuition. And so to thank WordPress, I contribute. Um, so ways to contribute. This is very important. There's a conception that you have to write code to contribute to core. And you do not at all. Uh, there's been a few talks today that have sort of touched on that, that point. And I mean, well, writing code is definitely a huge part of it because it's code based. Finding bugs. Finding bugs is huge. If you can just sit there all day and find bugs in core, because <laughs> everyone's got time for that, right? Um, but to be able to find a bug 
and effectively log a ticket. You may not have the skill set to fix that problem, but I guarantee someone else will. So they'll come along, they'll find that ticket, and we've, we've squashed a bug in core, and things get that much better. Um, there's a bunch of other ways. If you go to the make.wordpress.org site, right there, you click on the Get Involved tab, you'll get a whole bunch of boxes like, like this. Uh, there's more than this. I just pulled these out because they seem to be more closer to core, I guess. But like accessibility, it's a huge thing right now. Design and UX, polyglots for, like, uh, for translating WordPress itself in multiple languages. You've got mobile stuff, you've got documentation. Documentation is huge. If your code is constantly changing, you have to constantly update your documentation. It's a huge effort to do that. And of course, the core stuff. OK, any questions about anything? I'm just going to keep asking this after every slide. Yes? So I work for government of Ontario. OK. Accessibility, as you might imagine, is a yep. uh, huge concern. Sure is, yeah. Um, we have identified some accessibility problems with the WordPress dashboard. Okay. Some of them are bugs that are easy to fix. Yep. Some of them seem to be more structural. Uh, we have them pretty well documented. Okay. Um, is there an avenue? Yes, absolutely there is. You can, you, you can open a bug, like, or sorry, you can open a ticket. You can create a new, a new track ticket, which we'll talk about in, in a second. Um, the problem you might run into is the accessibility standards. Um, in, for the government, you're what, AA standard? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that might be hard to do. Um, that might be hard to get in, in full. Uh, I know other, other uh, content management systems, like say Drupal, for example, they have, they have their own sort of build that's specifically for the WCAG and the, like the wet toolkit and all that stuff. But, uh, but absolutely put it into as a core ticket. Um, there, there is a whole group of people that work on accessibility. So you know, adding that in in small iterative steps will get you eventually where you want to go. So, um, OK, so let's talk about some of the technical stuff. I have to throw a disclaimer out here. There's no possible way I can cover every technical aspect of this. It's high level. If you have questions, please you know, ask them or come talk to me later. We, we can talk more detail. If you're sticking around for the uh, contributor day, I can absolutely get into more detail. stuff. There, there's just too much. I can't explain it all. So, um, Anyways, so uh, the first thing we should talk about is the WordPress repository, the code. Um, so the WordPress repository is stored in an SVN rep repo or repository. It's, that's what, what they call it. Um, if you're not comfortable with SVN, it doesn't really matter. You don't really need to know SVN, per se. There's about four commands I think you need to run, and, and so that's not, not really that much of a concern. By default, you have read-only access to this. And I call this out because I, when I first started, I was new to SVN, and I was pretty new to command line. I was terrified that I would like type the wrong thing and melt the internet, and all of WordPress would be broken, and the whole world would come to my house and kill me. Like, it, you can't do that. It takes a long time to be able to get what they call um, commit access. I think there's 12 people maybe in the world that have it. I, I can't remember the number. But um, you don't have it. You can mess up your local computer all you want, but you can't break the remote, the WordPress core. Okay. Um, the other thing they mentioned is that when you first download it, and this confused me, is that the structure is different than what you'd see if you were to get the files from, say, .org, or you were to use WPCLI to install them locally or on a remote server. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So how to get the code? There's four ways. There's probably more, but these are the four that I'm sort of use. There's you can use SVN. So this is the command SVN CO for checkout, and then the path to the repo. There is git. There is a unofficial git mirror if you prefer git, and that's the command to get that. There's git SVN, which is sort of it's SVN commands inside of git, which is like sort of git inception. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then there's also just use, just use a GUI. Um, there's nothing wrong with using like a graphical user interface. If you want to use a program like Tortoise SVN, Tortoise Git, versions, whatever you're most comfortable with, there's nothing wrong with that. Use that because that's a better teaching tool than trying to muddle your way through command line stuff. And honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you use. You just need to get the code on your computer because you don't ever push back to, to the repos because you don't have commit access. You generate what are called patch files and they're, they're attached and people with more access than we have compare them, and then add them to the core and, and commit them that way. <coughs> so I, I talked about how the structure is different. So on this side, this is the root directory of core, when, when you download the core files. So you see there's a lot of stuff you're probably not, not, not familiar with. On the, left, uh, sorry, on the right side, that's the, that's the default, that's the standard core stuff that you would get. So it's not really that magical. Basically, everything inside the source folder is that stuff. So Source is where you're going to be doing the bulk of your work, unless you're writing unit tests, which you should, because they're awesome. 
you, but you would put them in tests. But essentially, this is inside of there, and now it's all clear. <laughs> um, this was supposed to be my remote, or sorry, my, my local development environment slide, and I was going to be a sort of like politically correct, and then I just thought, you know what? Use VVV because it's easy, so easy. If you're not familiar with, v what, with varying vagrant vagrants or VVV, um, it's a vagrant configuration that's used for WordPress development. If you're not familiar with Vagrant, Vagrant is a tool that allows you to create um, sandboxed virtual environments on your computer. So essentially, you can spin up a web server on your computer of any type with any, whatever co configuration you want. The best part about it is that it's disposable and it's shareable. So I hand you the file, you spin it up, we have the same machine. So there's no issues between like, I'm on a Mac, I'm on a PC, I'm on Linux. It's whatever. So it's ideal for core development, this, um, this configuration, because it, it, it sets it all up for you. It gets, the it gets the repo out, sets up all your host files. Everything is just there, and you're good to go. So it's a turnkey development environment. I highly, highly recommend using it. Um, that's the, uh, sorry, I just took my laser point and pointed it at my laptop. That's, that, that's helpful. Um, <laughs> uh, this is the GitHub. It's, it's on GitHub. It's, it's great. Um, that said, if you want to use MAMP or WAMP or whatever you're currently using, you can. It's just more setup. That's all. I wish I knew about VVV when I got started because I installed everything on my computer, uh, like trying to install compatible versions of Xdebug and PHP Unit and PHP and MySQL and, and uh, whatever else you need. I can't remember off the top of my head. And it was a nightmare because you're just things just aren't right, you know. So this does it. You don't have to worry about it, and you can start coding faster. So we mentioned patch files. So um, a patch file is, or a diff file, you'll hear them, it's interchangeable. It's essentially a text file, and all it contains is the differences, or the diff, between your, the local copy and the remote copy of, of the repo, sorry. So it tracks what those differences are, and then you attach that file to a ticket in track, and then people can, can review it, and they can, they can either you know, give you comments, or they can apply it to uh, core, and you get your props, which is what everyone wants. Um, you can create them through the command line, or you can create them through a GUI. Um, if you're going to use a GUI, just be sure that it actually supports creating and applying patches, because I, I think versions a, a, a while ago for Mac didn't allow you to create a patch. or what, I, I can't remember <laughs> if it was create or apply, but it was really pointless, because that's what you're doing all day, is creating patches, then you're reapplying someone else's patch to kind of to check it out. Right? So, so just make sure that whatever you're using actually supports that. Um, when you are going to create one, you're going to want to create it from the root of the local repository. So that you remember the slide on the left from that folder? You, you, you want to create it from, from inside of that folder. Reason being, um, there's plenty. you can create it from any folder, and when someone goes to try to apply it to their code base, if they're in the wrong place, it might not apply properly. Does anyone know what, it, what, what apply a patch means? I'm just assuming some things here. Are we good? It's just it, it essentially taking their changes and putting it on, <coughs> on your copy of the code base. So. Um, if, you, if you're not in the right place, it could not apply cleanly, and it, it just takes out the confusion if everyone does it from the same spot. Um, so the naming convention when creating the file is ticket number .diff. That's just a WordPress thing. So, um, so here are some commands if you want to do the command. So if you're if you're using SVN, SVN diff, and then that little what is that greater than symbol, and then the path to to the file that you want to put the diff information in. And then this is the git version of the same thing. You have to put this no prefix because it actually adds some other stuff in there that's uh, not, I don't think it's SVN compatible. Yes? So the number is the track. Yes, yeah. sorry, yes, ex ex exactly. So if your ticket is 12345, it's 12345.diff, okay? You just got a chocolate bar. Do you want a chocolate bar or do you want a uh, almond thingy thingy? Oh, almond thingy. Well, they're both almond, I guess, but here, you know what? <laughs> Which one would you like? Okay, Thanks. perfect. I just went off book, Adam, sorry. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the code. So if you're writing code for WordPress core, you have to make sure that these three things apply. Um, first of all, minimum WordPress, sorry, the minimum PHP version for WordPress that it supports is 5.2, which means that your code needs to support, needs to support 5.2. It doesn't mean you can't use more advanced features, but it means that you either have to figure it out so it works with 5.2 or just don't use it. Like things like namespaces, which everyone loves, can't use it. It's not 5.2 compatible. You had a question? <laughs> That's a really hot topic. I don't know. Um, I do know that PHP 7 is about to come out, so it's. Sorry? 
Oh, I don't. I, it's five. Yes, yes, sir. There, there's a point release there, but basically five points. I don't know if you can get. Yeah. So that's that's your baseline. So you have to write all of your code to that baseline. Um, and so the WordPress coding standards also apply. If, if you submit a patch and your code is not up to the standards, like there's a there's there's like white space standards in the way to format your code, um, it will you you will get notes ba uh, back on it. And same with documentation. The reason I call this out is because. With track, <coughs> I'm sorry, with uh, core, you want to make sure that when you get someone looking at, at your patch, that is ready. There's no like, oh, I forgot a comma there. Like that's a really silly reason to go back into a month of back and forth because you need to get someone's attention again, right? So you want to make sure that your tickets are as ready for review as possible. And if they're that way, you have a much better chance of getting someone to actually move it forward. Any questions on this stuff? All, all of this, th these two things are available on the Getting, the getting Started site. Uh, you can go and read this. Uh, for the coding standards, if you use an IDE, there's actually a GitHub re repo where you can use PHP Code Sniffer, and it will actually go through your code and it'll point out things that 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 aren't right, and you can change them. And it's really really helpful. I use it in PHP Storm all the time. Unit tests. Um, this is. <laughs> I just wanted to use this meme, but I don't always write unit tests. But when I do, my patches get into core. That that is for me personally. That's about 98% true. Um, the power of unit tests. Now, if you saw Carl's talk on unit tests, you'll know that these aren't actually unit tests, strictly speaking. They're more integration tests, but this is true. I, um, it's a, if you can't, if, sorry, let me back up. If you know how to write unit tests, absolutely write unit tests. If you don't know how, Core is a great way to learn how to work with PHP unit to get a test in place. That's how I learned, and it's, it's really, really easy. There's lots of, lots of examples, and everyone's really helpful. Um, <coughs> I'm working on a ticket for 4.4 right, right now. Uh, 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 Wonderboy Music, or Scott Taylor, he's the current re release lead that is managing 4.4. He said, said this to me in a track, uh, sorry, in, in a Slack uh, conversation. And I'm just going to read it. I know it's bad form to read off a slide, but it, it bears re 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 repeating. It's easier to dive into someone else's ticket and review it for commit if the unit tests are there to show both current and changed behavior. So the sort of short version of that is it proves that your changes fix a problem and don't introduce a new one. Okay, very very important um, because if I if you submit a ticket, uh, sorry, a, a patch with 2,000 lines of code and there's no unit tests, how do I know it's not going to break stuff, Adam? Okay, uh, you, so, uh, what exactly a unit test. It allows you to test portions of your code. Strictly speaking, you're supposed to test the smallest portion of code possible. With WordPress unit tests, they're more like integration, meaning it's testing the code that you just wrote with all of WordPress in the way it's supposed to work. So if you change functionality, there's, there's a potential that you're going to break something somewhere else. So what a unit test allows you to do is to confirm that your change didn't break anything, that, the, that what that function is supposed to return actually returns what it, what it is, right? <coughs> so, does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm not sure how it works, but I'm kind of. Okay. Yeah, so that's the theory behind it. Um, there's a whole test suite that's built into WordPress that when you, you work with Core, you just sort of write a new test and then run it, and it'll just work it all together. Um, if you want to stick around for, for the contributor day, we're going to be doing you know, test stuff for sure. So, oh, yeah, right. So, <laughs> uh, I guess you're kind of stuck here. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, add unit test right now. Um, any questions about unit test is a very, very, very deep topic. There's, you could talk like there's two two talks here alone on it, I think. So, but it's so powerful. Okay. Any questions on the technical stuff at this point that haven't already been asked? Yes. So if you do follow that path of using the, the very vagrant thing, yep. Um, how close are you to getting the right stuff? Um, you are at the point where you can code and you can create patches and you can submit them. You're not messing around with trying to get your, your environment just set up so you can write your first line of code. You are almost immediately, I mean, barring any issues with getting that set up, but you're almost immediately ready to go. You have the most up-to-date up version of uh, core ready. You have a host file set up so you can view it in the browser. You have your database ready so you can run PHP uh, unit tests. Everything is just ready to go. It's super, super easy. OK, so let's talk about track. This, this is a little, this is going to be a bit dry. A lot of screenshots on this one. so. Bear with. Um, ask a lot of questions, and you, and you get chocolate. <laughs> so, so, so track. So, what is track? Track is open source software. You can download it and and and, and use it for your own project. Um, it's used to manage the bugs and tasks of WordPress core. 
Now, the version that they're running has been heavily modified, but essentially it, it is still just track. Um, so you're going to need an account at WordPress.org to do anything with, with Tract, even just to submit a ticket, to add a comment, anything. So just go and sign up. It's free. Um, it has lots of different reports, which are just groupings of tickets. And because of that, it's confusing as all hell, right? Because there's so many places to go that you don't know where to start. Which leads me to my next slide, finding a ticket. <coughs> so because we're all new contributors, um, when you go, hey Paul, when you go to um, make.wordpress.org slash core slash reports, this is sort of the track homepage, you're going to get this whole list of stuff. Scroll down until you see getting started, and then specifically look at good first bugs for new contributors. Um, this is a great place to start. So <laughs> um, when, when you click on it, you're going to get something that looks like this. This is all the tickets in that report. Um, these tickets have all been flagged as, uh, by other developers as good starting points for core contribution. Does it mean it's good for people who don't know how, how it's not like easy sauce stuff for new developers the reason in fact they're not always easy at all the the reason they're 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 marked as that is because they're well contained so you're not going to touch every single portion of wordpress in order to solve this problem it might be one thing in one file that just needs to be addressed and so the point of these is to get you kind of more comfortable with the whole contribution thing before having to be an expert in every single aspect of wordpress to solve some of the more complicated problems um, once you have an account, you'll also notice this section on the uh, track ho uh, homepage. So this is the me section. This is the stuff that pertains to you. So where you go to create a ticket, uh, the my tickets is all the tickets that you've created and ones that have been assigned to you, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, my patches, yes? Do you have an approach to uh, determine whether there's an existing ticket for something you have um, Yes, and I talk about that in a minute. So. And you've already got your chocolate, sir, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so so my tickets and stuff that you've created. I'm oh, sorry, I've said that. So uh, my patches are any ticket that you've you've uploaded a patch to. Tickets I've participated in is essentially stuff you've commented on, and then my favorites. Use my favorites and use it all the time because I think the last time I I, I heard there was 3,500 tickets in track. Um, if you, if you find a ticket that you're interested in maybe looking at later, favorite it because your chances are you're never going to find it again, right? Um, so this is what a ticket looks like. This is pretty straightforward. Down here, there's the sort of commenting stuff. I didn't put that in because if you've seen a forum, you've seen, you've seen the comments, right? Um, so as you can see, first glance, it's kind of confusing. There's lots of stuff going on. You may not know what all this stuff means, right? It's really weird and scary and, you know. You know. So I'm going to just focus on sort of this top part here because this is where a lot of the ticket status-y type stuff happens. Um, so the first item is the star, and I guess you can, you can probably all guess what that does. It adds it to your favorites. The next item is the ticket number. The ticket number never changes. Once you have a ticket, it's always there. Even when it's closed, it's still there. It, it will just show up as having like a little strike through on it. Um, the, the next part is, a, is the type of ticket. So there's four types of tickets that, that you'll run into. The first is defect or bug. That's actually what it shows up as, and that's obvious what that is. Um, enhancement which is sort of a small, a small item that you want to add to Core. So it's kind of a high-level high way of explaining it because the next item, which is a feature request, is a much bigger item. So for example, in 4.3, when they wanted to put the uh, menus into the customizer, they did a, that was a feature request. That, that was like a feature proposal. That was a whole thing, right? That, that's a much bigger, bigger uh, type of ticket. And the last one is task. Um, the second two, as new contributors, you're really not going to mess with much. <coughs> you might help out with another ticket that is a feature request, but uh, the task um, one is more of like a tracking ticket. So, yes? Um, it just means it's been blessed by someone with commit access, usually. So it's, it's sort of like a ticket that, like, um, well, here's an example. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Scott Taylor created the ticket for 4.4. For where he's going to take all of the classes, all the PHP classes in WordPress and put them in their own files. So he created a ticket, a task, that was basically a tracking ticket that held other tickets. So when he, when he created the ticket to move one particular class, he made a reference to it in the task. It's a, it's a way of sort of managing a whole bunch of other tickets. That's one use for it. Um, there's some other things like it'll be like updating jQuery and stuff like that. So. These are things that, that are more like core committers and guest committers have access to, and they'll, they'll, they'll mess with. So this is obvious. It's reported. This is, this is actually my, my ticket that I'm still trying to get in, but that's, an, that's another story. Um, so owned by is when a ticket is assigned to someone. 
Oh my God, really? Whew, okay, I'm gonna have to fly through this. <laughs> uh, okay, so owned by, when someone assigns you a ticket, your name shows up there. And that essentially just means it's your job to kind of push that ticket forward. And if anyone has questions about it, um, they're going to ask you first. That's really what that comes down to. The milestone, this is a big one. The milestone is what's happening with the current ticket. When you create a new ticket, you have the first um, option. There's only three options that, that appear here. You have a waiting, a waiting review. The next one is future release, which means that, okay, we like this ticket. It's going to go into WordPress, but not right now. And then the third op option is a release version, which is the one you want. So they're going to say, okay, it's going to go into 4.4. We're, we're going to get this into this release. The next two items I'm not even going to talk about, those are just priorities. You don't change those. You don't need to. It's all other stuff. The version is if you're submitting a bug and you're on a particular version of WordPress, you should put it there so people can reproduce in that particular uh, version of WordPress. The component is this kind of which subsection of WordPress it applies to. And the last one is the keywords. It, this is the kind of the essentially the status of the ticket. So you'll see things like has patch, which means that there's a patch ready for review here. And I've asked for dev feedback. There's other ones like needs re refresh, which means the patch doesn't apply cleanly anymore. So someone needs to rewrite it. Needs unit test is one. Good first bug is one. Commit is one. That's the one you want to see. Um, and, but, but there's a whole bunch of them. Yes. Yes, there's a there's a list of keywords that, that, that there's a drop yeah. down that you can yeah, but you can you can add them and, and remove them as as needed. So this is creating a ticket. So the form is all everything that we just discussed. As you're sort of writing your summary and this answers your question, it will actually prompt you with tickets that could be similar, because you should always do a search first. Because if you create a new ticket and it's already been in place, they're gonna just they're gonna close it as a duplicate. Uh, when you're writing your title, be as concise as you can, but a little bit sexy so you get someone's attention to look at it. When you're writing the description, put in as much possible information as you can. If it's a bug, steps to reproduce, screenshots, put code in, doesn't matter, anything, I don't care, narration, put a movie in there, whatever you need, right? Whatever you need so someone can look at this ticket having never seen it before and get exactly to where you are in, uh, so they can re reproduce the problem or know exactly what you're trying to, trying to do with this, right? Um, down here, there's a little checkbox. Sorry, I'm really flying. <laughs> uh, down here, there's a little checkbox to be able to add a, add a patch. So if you check that off and hit create ticket, you'll go to this screen. You can also get to this screen by just the add attachment button that we saw earlier in the top of the ticket. Do you guys remember that? So this is, it's a form. You've all seen web forms. Um, you just, you're going to upload a ticket, ticket number dot diff and um, track. So you might see that there is a, a long running ticket that has multiple patches and you'll see one, two, three, four, five dot diff and then one, two, three, four, five dot one dot diff dot two dot diff and don't want so on and so forth. You don't have to add those point numbers. I did it for six months and it was, it was, it was crazy. Track will actually just do that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, also, don't ever check this unless you really, really mean to. Because what this does is this will actually replace the same ticket name. So if you have a long running ticket, we people like to keep the, the diff, the differences between the diffs. So you see a logical um, sort of like progression. So if you're like 100 tickets down, or 100 patches down and you replace this, it's going to replace the original patch file, which it's going to be confusing. People won't know where, where to go to get the most recent one. So only do that if you really mean to. OK, so this is the last section, the community. Um, this is really abstract stuff, but stuff I've sort of run into that is sort of like how to navigate the waters of core once you've kind of got your tickets, got your development stuff, and now you've got tickets in play, and what do you do? right? So the first thing you need to do, and if you take away one item for, from my talk today besides chocolate, make sure it's this. Um, get as involved as you possibly can in the community. Join uh, meetups. Go to WordCamp. So good, <coughs> good job. Go to and sign up for the make.wordpress.org slash core blog. That's going to give you all the information that you need to know what's going on in core, right? Education. It's sort of like, what's that GI Joe saying? Knowing's half the battle, right? So if you know, does anyone actually know that that's <laughs> Joe? I feel like I just dated myself. Um, so, it, you know, and the biggest one is join Slack. Slack is a, I guess, a chat room, a chat channel where all the dev me meetings happen. You're going to learn so much information just by being there and being a fly in the wall. Go to every single meeting. You don't have to contribute, just read and g absorb as much as you can. There's so much to learn that it's really going to help you. Um, one of the big things that I learned when I first got, got into it, thank you, is. Um, is how release cycles affect new tickets or features. So 
because um, one thing that can be very frustrating for new developers is the radio silence that occurs. You submit a ticket, you have this, this great new feature, you have an awesome patch, everything's ready to go. No one looks at it for six months, right? And then they do and it's just like, oh, okay, cool, whatever, and then that's it. So how do you sort of move your, like why is that happening? Well, one possible reason is because the later you get into a release cycle for a new version of WordPress, they stop accepting new bugs. Even if they're the greatest bugs in the world, like the, or sorry, the easiest sort of like lowest hanging fruit possible. When I was, I was, um, where I found a bug that was in four, uh, that was in WordPress when they were uh, re about to release 4.3, or they were working on on 4.3. So I did all my due diligence. I wrote a unit test to demonstrate that there was a problem. I wrote a patch that fixed that problem. And those unit tests also demonstrated that my fix didn't break anything. I wrote up the patch with everything that they needed, and it was a, it was marked to go into 4.3. <coughs> and the the release lead at the time came by, saw it, and said, "Nope, we're not doing it because we're just about to go into release uh, candidate." Which means they they locked down that data or that that code base, so you know, so they did what they call punting it. So it was set to future release, and the only reason was because I was just too late in the release cycle. It had nothing to do with my code. But if you didn't sort of have that background knowledge of, of how that works, you can see how that can be very frustrating for people who, like, what, what's RC underscore one mean? What does that mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's it. It can be confusing. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Lend a hand. Um, it doesn't always have to be your ticket that you start, create, write all the code for, test, and get committed. Um, every release has really big items that, that are being worked on. Like in 4.3, where I got a, a bunch of props, it's, um, it was all in a customizer, all in the, um, like adding menus to the customizer. There was, some, there was uh, stronger passwords and stuff. So I, I reached out to the uh, guest committer who was working on the stuff for the menus and said, hey man, do you need a hand? He's like, yes, I have some, some unit tests that need help. Can you please just take a look at these? So I, I got some really easy props because he needed that help. It was going to be moved forward. And you know, so that's, that's a really good way of sort of doing two things. One, getting your name on the list for the, the credits and also to build relationships. Because without relationships in the community, you're, you're going to find it very hard to kind of to, to both give help and to get help. You're going to be very isolated. Um, my first core props came from Helen. I don't know if Helen, Helen who's handy, who's a lead developer for WordPress. She also works at 10up. Um, she basically dropped a link in our internal chat and said, hey, if anyone's got a second, can I take a look at this? I'm working on it. So I did, and I got my props that way. Now, I realize not everyone has their first tickets handed to them by a lead developer of WordPress, but what that demonstrates is I had that relationship with Helen, and I also, and this is, this is an important concept too, I had the attention of someone who could commit it and who could move my ticket forward. Because I can, I can write tickets for days, I can write awesome patches for days, but if nobody's looking at them, or nobody with commit access is looking at them, they're not gonna really go anywhere, right? Does that make sense, what I mean for commit access? Okay, cool. <coughs> Uh, be patient. Be, be patient. Core is volunteer. Stuff takes time. Enough said. While you're being patient, you need to self-advocate. Um, <clears throat> so what I mean by that, there's a term that, uh, that, that you might hear called bug gardening. And I, I like to think of bug gardening as annoy everyone with your ticket until somebody moves it forward. Within, you know, within respectful reason, obviously. But because if you don't push your efforts forward, your tickets, no one else will. There's 3,500 tickets in track, right? No, one, like, no one's going to go look for yours and be like, oh, this is a good idea. I'm going to do this, right? They're, they're doing their own thing. So one really awesome way of doing this is every dev chat, um, there is an open floor. So you can go in there and you can drop your ticket number and someone will take a look at it. Um, yeah, so it's, it, if you don't do it, no one else will. That's kind of what it comes down to. Um, I found it contributing to core to be a front-loaded effort. You do a ton of work up front, get a lot of tickets going on, you build up this whole backlog of tickets, and then it might seem you're doing a lot of work, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, the the dam breaks, and you're getting like you just get a ton of of props. Like I work with a guy at Ten Up that was like, oh man, I didn't even know I had props in this release because he had worked on so many tickets, right? So it's definitely it's worth it to 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 put the work in, right? Um, the last one, the most important one. I feel like I'm going super fast now, is have fun. You're not being paid, so have fun. Enjoy it, right? Because it is fun. The community is awesome. Um, it is, you know, there's a real sense of satisfaction to be able to get your code into, the, sorry, your changes into code that powers, what, 25% of the internet, 24% of the internet? It's pretty cool, right? So, <coughs> perfect. So, have fun. That's kind of it for me. Um, I have some links, but any questions?
Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh. Um, it's your wordpress.com email at chat.wordpress.com. Yeah, if, if you go here, I think it'll, it'll take really you through the like whole process. Yeah, but I remember the first time it yeah. was like, what the? <laughs> so I know I kind of raced through this stuff towards the end because I had far, obviously far more content than I had time for. But um, does anyone have any questions related to what I'm talking about or just core stuff in general? Yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, if I wanted to work on that, how do I know that it's legitimately an enhancement that someone's going to agree with down the road and actually do something with it if I were to do um, Well, there's no guarantees that it won't get closed out at some point. Um, because it still exists, that's a good indication that you're, you, it's not a wasted effort. A, a, a lot of tickets get opened and closed immediately. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a component maintainer for widgets, which means I just sort of kind of keep an eye on the widget section. And I get a lot of emails of people just kind of going through and being like, oh, you know what, no one's even, no one's commented on this ticket in two years, we're going to close it out. So um, I think it's, I think it's worth the effort, even just for practice, like there's no, there's, if, if it was a, like, no, this is ridiculous, they would have closed it already, basically. The, the, the ones that you said were marked as good for... First, yeah. Does that mean that someone has done a... a yes, yes. So someone, someone has, has reviewed that and looked at it like, okay, this, this is a good ticket. It, there's some, there, it, it, it's valid in some way, shape, or form. We're going to mark it as a, as a good first bug. It may not have a patch. It may not have anything associated with it, but it, it's just marked as a good place to start. So yeah, so that's why it's so good, because some, someone has curated that list for you. He, and you had a question? Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I guess I've gone there several times and updated in WordPress and some of the stuff about working with the client expects. So I expect most recently when 4.3 and actually crash your site because of a memory thing. Okay. Yeah. In your, in your core. It's how did those actually get prioritized? Because you know, some you know think so. Oh, okay, next release, and all of a sudden. Yeah, I think a lot of that's determined by the release lead. So I, I think a lot of that is determined by the release lead, by by whoever is sort of heading them up. Is that accurate? Yeah. yeah. Partially, uh, I, I probably even more than that. It's determined by volunteers that are interested in working on it. Mm. Uh, that's a really good point. Yeah. It, Sudden yeah. it's done and it's ready to go in, even if it didn't seem like it should have been as important as the other stuff. Yeah, and I think the lead developers also dictate a bit of a bit of their priorities as well. Like there's the the lead developers as well. There's what nine? And there, and there are a lot of the ones that also dig into the stuff that's not as fun but really needs to be done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like term splitting. Would be a good source to find out if something core has changed or anything. Uh, okay. Uh, track. For example, I. Yeah. You know, how they operate and okay, what happened here that my posts aren't you know, the featured image is gone or, or whatever the case might yeah. be. Yeah. Well there's I mean there's there's lots of stuff that, that no, changes. I'm so like, I, I have no idea. Um I mean you you can I, I mean probably the best way to do it is is to log a bug. Like say, you know, this is, I have this client. I, I have this. What's going on here? And and someone could just say, okay, this has been this has already been logged as a bug, and and here's the ticket, and then you can get more information about that particular issue. If it's an issue with core, it may just be an issue with that client setup too, right? Like it could be maybe there's a plugin that didn't do its term splitting correctly. Like like there's lots of stuff that's going on in there that that could potentially be the cause. It's not necessarily just because you hit the update button in core. 
and I'm, I'm definitely not saying that you know core, core is perfect, but um, there's just there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of possible areas where that could go wrong. I think. Yeah. Right there. Week yeah. And if you check that every week, then you know what's going in. Yep. If you sign up for the mailing list, you should get those it's in your inbox. So and, and, and that's what I was talking about earlier is that you have to you have to go here because this is this is the place where people like if there's a new feature request, it's gonna go it's gonna show up there. If if there's like, hey, we, we have this idea for stronger passwords, it's gonna go there. Like it's gonna tell it's meant for developers to know what sort of changes are in there and what sort of breaking changes there possibly are. Like we went through the whole thing with term splitting over the past few uh, versions. And I mean, so the information that we as developers would need is there so you can prep for the new release of WordPress. So you, so you can sort of not have those white screens uh, if it's related to that particular thing. Uh, well, they're still in there. They're just in a file called de is it depreciated or deprecated dot, dot PHP. So so. so, so the site trying to find out if it's depreciated. Was it removed? If it's break, it should still no, work. work. It'll just give a error message. Yeah. If you have display errors turned on. Which yeah. Is something that probably shouldn't be on on a production. Yeah, house. definitely not. It's on your dev site. Well, the site. Well, the way that they or deprecate things. Yeah. yeah. Well, but yeah. But was it was it deprecated and then was it removed? Yeah, De deprecated means you shouldn't use it anymore, but it's still there. It still exists. Yeah, your code can still use it and it'll still function, but you should update your code mm -hmm. to use whatever the newer right. yeah. And I, is. I deprecated isn't gone. It's just our recommendation to not use that anymore. Is there a plugin that actually checks? Um, there there is. You can use the log deprecated notices plugin. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't run that on a production machine because you'd, um, you'd, you'd want to run that local, like in your staging environment because your code's going to be the same anyways, right? So um, that'll give you an idea of what you're running that's, that's been deprecated. A big one right now is the, is the widget class constructor. Uh, the PHP 4 constructor. Yes, sorry. Yes, correct. The, five, the PHP 5 constructor still work and mm -hmm. because PHP 7 is no longer going to support the PHP 4 constructors, they have to come out. Yeah. So your debug log will fill up with all sorts of stuff if, if there's stuff in there, specifically Pull Daddy. <laughs> What's that? A lot of plugins Yeah. Yeah. There is, there, there's a, I, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but there is a filter to turn those notices off. So, but, yeah. There's also a lot of changes going out to the plugins that are in the .org repository that haven't yet updated. They all got notices and no longer get another notice. Yeah. Well, that's a great place to go and contribute that an update. If, anybody, if anybody's interested in contributing to yeah. that's amazing. It's, yeah, it's huge. We need it. It often rides behind. Yeah. Luckily, we have some people more focused on it now than we ever have before, but still. Yeah. Cool. So any any other questions, con comments, con concerns? We're going to be in here again for, for the core, contrib to core. So. Yeah, so you're welcome to stick around. If you asked a question and you didn't get chocolate, come up and get chocolate. Otherwise, it's first come, first serve. <laughs> Thank you.